Hello, I'm Bob Toomey. Welcome to Around the Old Town. This afternoon I have Christy Coombs with me, the founder of the Coombs Foundation. Christy, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank Thanks you very so much. Thanks so much, Bob. Thanks for having it. me. It's been a while since I spoke to you, yeah. and I know you've been busy, especially in yeah. September, but it's now November, and I want to see what's coming up for the next couple of months, if you can elaborate. Yeah. Well, the road race was a huge success. Uh, we're glad to have that behind us and looking forward to the 15th annual next year. And uh, so now we have coming up the uh, ninth annual holiday party for military families that we host each year. Uh, for families of the, uh, those who will be deployed over the holidays, those who have been deployed any time during 2015. Also, families of the fallen and families of the injured. So this year, the party's going to be at the Charlie Horse Restaurant in West Bridgewater. And we'll have a lot of fun and uh, activities for the kids and things for the adults as well. It's going to be a brunch this year. So okay. we're hoping that uh, any military family that qualifies for that will email me. You can find it all over Facebook. Find it on our website, jeffcoombsfund.org and uh, we hope you'll come out for that. Uh, the other exciting thing we have is we have two runners running the Boston Marathon for us this year. Excellent. <clears throat> Each of them uh, has committed to raising uh, $7,500. Uh, we have numbers through the John Hancock Charity Program. So um, we have my son's friend, uh, Jack Walsh, is going to be running. He's a local guy. And also uh, another local who's transplanted to, um, to Oklahoma, but uh, he's going to come out and run for us, uh, Alex London. So they're both uh, two young men who are great runners and really excited to do this for us. And they have experience running? A they are. They yeah. are. Um, I, Alex has not run a marathon yet. This is going to be his first, and to have Boston be his first is really special for him. And um, I'm not sure if Jack has run a marathon, but he's done a lot of half marathons, and, and they, they both committed to raising the money, and they know they can finish the marathon. So um, my kids are excited about them running for us, and, and they'll help them do the fundraising. So Excellent. Yeah, we're looking forward to that it. That works well. The John Hancock, I know, does it for many they charitable do. foundations. They do. They, they raise millions and millions of dollars through, through this program. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a great program. Because yeah. I know if, if, some friends of mine that have done it also for other charities, like yeah. for Little Wanderers. And, yeah, this is, yeah. A, I think, our sixth year of having t uh, a number. Oh, uh, we've that. got good two numbers. So, um, you know, as long as we continue raising the money, um, John Hancock, I think, will continue issuing the numbers to us. And mm -hmm. that's the thing, that the better chance you have of raising more money each year, the better chance you have of getting the numbers again next sure, year. Sure, because, you know, many, many so. fundraising groups are right. begging them for numbers. Right, exactly. So, obviously, you've produced because they wouldn't. Right. There's money and as everyone interest. knows, the money that comes into the foundation goes directly out uh, to the people who need it. And I've gotten more requests in the last three weeks or so than I think I've gotten in a six month period. Yeah. And not even with the holidays coming, just general requests of people needing assistance. So it's really sad that there's so much need out there, but with the road race having done so well and with the prospect of raising a good amount of money with the road race, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to be able to help families in the way that we can. And we've also, we're, we're hoping to get the uh, memorial set of, with the piece of steel that we have uh, we're hoping to get that uh, in and built by the 15th anniversary of 9-11. And where do you expect to do it? That's going to be going in front of the police station. Okay. So we've got a new design that's being worked up by Doug Ulwick, and so we've got to go through the approval process of that and then hopefully have a couple of fundraisers to help us get that. I've gotten a lot of promises from people around town for in-kind donations. Okay. Sure, and, like um, labor. And right, exactly. Right. Yeah. So um, it, th that's going to be a nice thing, and then we'll have a little dedication in September for the 15th anniversary. Well, of course, a lot on your plate as usual. Yeah. And but again, the two big ones are the uh, the, ch the, the the veterans holiday party holiday on December nineteenth. December nineteenth. December nineteenth at yep. the Charlie Horse. Yes. From what time? It's roughly? from nine thirty to noon, and that's not something that's open to the public. Right. That's for um, military families only. We've got a lot of offers to help if anybody wants to donate raffles. Everything to the military families is free. Good. We don't take a dime from them um, to to go to the party or once they're inside. So we have free raffles for them. We have all kinds of activities and things like that. So anybody that wants to contribute toward funding the party or donating a raffle for the families, um, they can get in touch with me, and we will happily accept it. And what's the um, email again, the Coombs Foundation? The, the Coombs Foundation, uh, they can email me at jeffcoombsfund at gmail.com. Okay. We'll try to get that printed up, too, by the way, uh, on the TV. Yeah. And what uh, Facebook? You said you're on Facebook We're as on well? We're on Facebook, yep, uh, Jeff Coombs Foundation. Um, and uh, they can also, you know, email me personally or we're in the phone book. They can find me that way. And if you have to, you can call me at, uh, at doomy 44 at Verizon.net. Uh, but again, Christy, thanks all so much yeah, for all you, you do. And I hope everything goes well. And happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and thanks, happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. And uh, 
that's it for today with Christy. Uh, coming up next will be Rich Tester and Peter Schaefer, the superintendent of the schools, to talk about the new high school building that's being built. Thanks again, Christy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Toomey. Welcome to Around the Old Town. With me today is Peter Schaefer, the superintendent of schools for the Abington Public Schools, and Rich Tester, the chairman of the school building committee. Uh, as you know, there are many people in Abington, and we're all talking about the new schools, but very few have all the information particularly correct. So I want to clear the air here and let Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Testa tell you firsthand what's going to be happening and what's happened already and what we can look forward to the future. So, uh, Mr. Schaefer, why don't you start off? Um, well, we're very excited. Um, it, we're, uh, we're underway. Um, we have an official groundbreaking ceremony coming up that we, we want to tell you about. Um, but it's, it's funny, uh, there's so many people to thank for all of the work that just went in over the last couple of years just to get to this day. It's very exciting and it's, it's be careful what you wish for because now the actual work of getting this done the right way begins. And there's a lot of uh, diligent effort that's, that's going on right now. And every single day there's, um, there's a new exciting uh, question uh, in terms of planning and execution to make sure that, that this is a, is a, a perfect perfect project for the next community for the, for the community for the coming 50 years um, I just got to tell you none the least of which is how exciting it is that this one project will improve the educational experience for every child in the Avenue Public Schools um, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to Rich but you know hopefully we can go back and forth a little bit and have a little bit of a discussion but um, what's most important is to remember that this project is a 5 through 12 school with a pre-k but because we'll be able to use the existing infrastructure in a better way for the students that are in kindergarten, grade one, two, three, and four, all, again, all of the students in the school department who come to the Avenue Public Schools are gonna have better and improved educational space. Not just the kids that are in a brand new state-of-the-art building, but all the kids uh, in Abington. So right, we'll open up space for those other students who aren't in the new building. Correct, we'll right. be able to close the center school in the North School building, turn those back over to the town just as soon as we can for the, for the town to use or um, for whatever purpose the town wishes, whether they want to sell them or use them, whatever the town, whatever the taxpayers want to do, that'll happen. Um, we'll move the uh, administrative offices and any other, any other people that want to lease space from us over to the Froyo Middle School in the end. And again, we'll have that five through 12 uh, school with, uh, with a pre-K with the middle school being entirely separate than the high school. And it's just exciting that there are construction crews. We've, we've, we've begun um, the process. Uh, the fencing is up. Things are reconfigured. Um, so it's just very exciting to be at this point. I know you're breaking ground because I'm at the high school frequently and the kids, as soon as they hear those engines roaring with those trucks, they're right out the window saying, wow, it's actually happening. So that's why I have you and Mr. Testa here because now it's, it's actually in, you can see it, it's visible that this is being done. So let me just touch on that for a second yes. before I turn it over to our, our Chairman Rich Testa. A lot of time and attention is being paid to make sure that the, the construction uh, impact uh, is minimal to our students at the high school. Um, we're not going to be able to prevent, and I don't know that we want to prevent them being able to see um, and experience some of this construction from um, an appropriate vantage point. Sure. Because we'll be able to do lessons around environmental science and engineering. We're lucky that we're working with AI3 and uh, KBA, the architects that are our project manager and our, our architectural firm, because they've already reached out. We already have um, sessions with students around engineering and environmental science uh, planned, an introductory uh, experience about what they will be seeing in the coming um, months, um, because it's a teachable moment. It's a learning opportunity that we want to take advantage of. And at the same time, the vibration and the beeping and the dust, um, there, are, there are things in place to mitigate that. There's a fence up with a, a visual barrier, so which you're, when you're at ground level, um, you're not able to, to see into the site. Um, you can't make the construction go away. Of course not. It's happening in their backyard, um, but we're doing everything that we can. Um, the trucks and the delivery times do not coincide when when the schools in session. Schools well when yeah. the kids are coming and going, right. the parents are dropping off um, during the day. There will they will be deliveries and things like that, but not during those peak times. Um, we're creating uh, additional parking spaces at the high school because parking has been a challenge. Um, there'll be things that are challenges to work around for sure, 
um, but people are working very hard to minimize those uh, sure. impact on the students. It's so. a small sacrifice to make. Yeah. <laughs> so. Absolutely. So I, wanna, I certainly want to uh, talk to our chair of our building committee, though, um, Richard Please. Tess, who's sure. been outstanding. Thank you. Thank you, first of all, Bob, for having us today. It's, it's I want to get the right information out, and you two guys are the resource. So. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, so we're, we were fortunate. In October, we received the bids from our general contractors, and we were successful in having our bid come in um, under budget. The project is, uh, w continues to remain on budget and on schedule. We signed our contract with Brait Builders out of Marshfield. And Brait may be familiar to some. They built the uh, Hingham Middle School, as well as they most recently finished the new uh, Marshfield Middle High School project in Marshfield. So our design team and owner's project manager have a lot of experience working with Brait in the past. Um, and we're excited to have the opportunity to work with them on, on Abington's new project. And they've worked together, you said, which they makes have. it that much easier because communication and the project this size must be important. And absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we have our assistant owner's project manager is, is on site. He's, he's on site for the duration of the project, so uh, we have a direct line to him. You know, if there's any uh, questions or comments, you know, we can reach out to him directly. Sure. Um, we also, I need to extend a, a thank you to uh, the local youth sports, Abington Youth Soccer, as well as Abington Football. They were uh, very accommodating. Originally, we had given them a deadline of December 1st, and when we signed the contract with Brait, they were very eager to get started as soon as possible. And you know, as the show is being aired, they, they've already started uh, work back there, and we're not even halfway through November yet. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were we asked to push the timeline up on the youth sports groups, and they were very accommodating to to get in there and, and get their stuff out of there, so we could get the contractors cut loose and, sure. and they're in there and working hard already. So uh, we're appreciative to them and appreciative to the contractor for, for wanting to, to get going to get sure. going as soon as possible. Well, the cold weather will probably you know, have some sort of hindrance to the project, but that's expected, of course. Absolutely. Right. We're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we don't see a winter like last year because uh, that can make all the, all the difference. But as it, as it presently exists, our, our timeline is phase one uh, is the construction of the new um, artificial turf fields and that will be complete in the fall of 2016. Um, we expect that the school construction will be complete uh, in late fall to December of 2017, um, at which point we'd raise the existing school building and then start to uh, complete the grass fields that will be in the current location of the existing school. Okay, so good. we expect construction to be complete uh, 2018, well, expect the entire project to be complete uh, in 2018. Now you mentioned the fields. Uh, some people have asked me, well, we're getting a new football field, but from what I understand, the town has pretty much decided we're going to keep the veterans field. Do you want to talk about that, please? Uh, absolutely. There's, there was a lot of discussion within the community about, uh, Memorial you know, veterans Memorial, 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 about the Memorial Field, and, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of history there, and, uh, and a lot of work's gone into it. You know, especially with the, the 300th anniversary and the new uh, fencing that it had gone up. Uh, so when we discussed it and, and looking at the site restrictions that we have with the existing high school, it's a very uh, compressed site. And to try to fit Memorial Field, it, it wouldn't make sense. They'd have to uh, eliminate some of the other uh, ideal uh, things you have absolutely, going. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and nor would the MSPA uh, participate in, in helping to pay for that. So, okay. uh, you know, both the rich history, you know, combined with the space restrictions, the monetary impact, uh, it just it didn't make sense to, to look at including that as part of the project. Uh, we will have two synthetic turf fields. Um, those will uh, likely be used by, you know, all the youth sports, um, you know, lacrosse, youth football, and again, sports that, that we may not even have now. Uh, right. Field hockey, as an sure. example. Um, the, the schools don't have a field hockey team, um, and the current, uh, the current site wouldn't have been conducive to field hockey. But turf is, is a great uh, venue to right. play field hockey. So, sure. you know, it even opens up opportunities such as those in the future. That's great. Can I just build on something that, that Rich said that's important to note? Something you don't hear very often in government is groups working well together. I don't 
I, I, I know for a stand it doesn't happen I don't often. remember the last time I could tell you that I ever heard a story about government working well together, I sadly. But I can tell you that we also have other people to thank. And, you know, uh, in, the, in the town hall with our town manager, our building department, Marshall Adams, um, and uh, the police, and the fire, and the highway uh, department, Jack Kane, they've been superior at being able to uh, work with us, to solve problems, to move quickly. Uh, to do the right thing, uh, to to uh, to expedite this project and this program the right way. So That's important because it's for the town's benefit. No yeah. one's benefited politically no. by it or anything. The whole town is going to benefit from it. People haven't been territorial. They've done their job. Excellent. And um, so I appreciate that. That's a positive to hear because most town governments don't run as efficiently yeah. as that. Yeah. No, I'd say it's been probably the the truest form of collaboration that I've ever experienced. I'm glad to hear that. This is the right project for it. <laughs> Absolutely. I think people recognize how important this is to be a good project for the community. Right. So. And plus that trade should time delays, which costs money. Yep. And, and it's all about our tax dollars. And we want to see it go to the proper use. And like you said, you're on a time schedule. Let's work it out and deal with it. And so far, everyone has been, which is yep. the most important. So. Uh, we talked, too, about not putting the, the veterans' fields up there, of course. You, you're surrounded by wetlands, right? The, the new building site will be surrounded by wetlands. So what were some of the restrictions you had to deal with? Uh, are you, what are you going to, uh, parking maybe, something limited. Want to talk about that? Well, sure. So it, it is a, a compressed site. Um, we're not going beyond the existing school site. So we had a, you know, a defined area to work with. And we you know, had to do our best to get all of the all of the amenities, if you will, um, into the site. You sure. know, everything that, you know, our town historically hasn't had, whether it, you know, be the, the auditorium, you know, the multi-purpose playing fields, you know, and try to find a way to, to be able to include those in the project, you know, while also still, you know, maintaining an appropriate number of parking spaces and, and let's not forget building the most appropriate educational facility because that's really what it's all it's about. The priority, you know, sure. the amenities are, are great, but in the end they're just that. You know, this right. is the building in which we're going to educate our children for the sure. next 50 years, and that's really what the the primary focus is of of the building. So, uh, you know, we we have we, you know, conservation, you know, they've they've taken great care, you know, in making sure that, you know, there's no impact, you know, to to the abutters or to the wetlands. Um, you know, and you know, we we will uh, improve the parking, there'll be more parking spots, uh, but there'll also be more users of, right. of the parking on site. So, um, you know, if, if we're having a, you know, a show on the, you know, 750-seat auditorium and uh, Abington Rockland basketball game at the same time, you know, it, we'll have to make do. Know, parking will, right. um, will present a challenge, I'm sure. But, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a great problem to I have? I was just going to say, that's a, the problem I like to you know, deal have, with. Have right? a, a show in an auditorium and a, a great high school basketball rivalry taking place. And, sure. And have the facility to be able to do that. Both at the same time. So, right. Um, you, know, we, you know, throughout the project, we, we looked at, you know, a number of different variables. And we looked at the cost-benefit analysis. And we looked at the, you know, the number of playing fields. And do you sacrifice a playing field for additional parking? Or do you you know, forego tennis courts on site for additional parking. Right. And, you know, what, what it went back to was, you know, what, what's going to provide the greatest benefit to the community, sure. you know, to the students. And, you know, parking spaces are important, but, you know, tennis courts and, and field space uh, are more important. Right. So, you and know, where... the we're facilities within the school are the most important for the creation, right, education. Sure. Absolutely. That's great. Um, if uh, people are interested in, actually, you can you can watch the construction process live on a camera. There's a um, we found a very creative, low cost way to provide a webcam um, using one of the existing power source uh, on the side of the building. Um, if people go to abingtonps.org, which is our uh, main page uh, for the public schools, you'll see a tab there that has a live camera feed um, behind the site now. Um, it may be, a, it may be a, um, a jumpy feed. You won't be able to watch maybe a, sl a, a, a smooth motion, but it is live. And so um, the picture updates itself probably every second or two. That's uh, amazing. And um, you, need to, you need to use uh, the Chrome browser, and there's a, there's a username and a password. That all of these instructions are on the website if you read Perfect. those when you click on it. Um, but it's um, the username and the password. I'll let you in on the secret. Um, if you don't tell anybody, uh, it's the username is Abington and the password is Abington. 
So hopefully those are easy for Even people. Even I could remember that. <laughs> hopefully those are easy for people to remember. And all the if you forget it's okay, all the instructions are right there on the website on how to access it. That's important because so. you can literally see it second by second. I mean, second by if you second. want to do it every day or something, you can see yep. the development. And it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's awesome. Right, I, just, I agree. I do. Yeah, the technology has come a long so, way. Yeah. <laughs> and that way people can see, you know, exactly what's going on there. Right. So. That's important. I'm glad you told us that. And that Justin put that on the uh, screen so you folks at home can see that. And you've not only heard Peter, but it's visible to you as well. Uh, any other subjects within the schools that we should be talking about, about the building committee first? Um, any questions that people have asked you guys that you want to put out publicly? Maybe some people have asked about... Sure, there, yeah. has, there, there has been a question recently about, uh, about the groundbreaking ceremony, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's going to take place on November 23rd. Uh, okay. That's Monday at 1230, um, and that will be at the site, rain or shine. You know, so we're we're excited about that. Is that open to the public? Uh, it is open okay. to the public. It's uh, certainly more ceremonial in in nature than anything else. Right. Um, obviously, the the work's already well, started. Right. The problem has broken. Um, so, <laughs> you know, but anyone that's interested, you know, is certainly more than welcome to attend, and that that will take place, rain or shine. Okay, and that's the twenty third of November, twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. At the behind the high school. Behind the high school. The current high school. Absolutely. I know eventually, once you have the fields done and you, the steel goes up and the school's actually being constructed and we're ready to move in, then the current school will be raised. Correct. Is that correct? R-A-Z-E-D as opposed to R-A-I-S-E-D. Correct. Uh, and what, what's going to happen with that? Like, uh, you, you told that, I uh, told you, uh, shovel that away, you tore, tore the debris. Does that become debris? Does it, well, how do you get rid of it is it, what I'm asking. It does. So a large majority of that will be recycled in some form or fashion. Uh, the school project is LEED Silver certified. Um, so in order to comply with those environmental uh, requirements, you need to uh, repurpose much of, um, much of what's left sure. of that building. So, um, you know, the, the building itself, you know, the interior, whether it's desks, various things like that, you know, we're looking at the, the best um, and most appropriate use for those. So some of those, you know, may be you know, repurposed in other schools if they're newer, um, you know, if if they have no use to the town, you know, we'll look at, you know, how can we maximize the, the taxpayers' dollars and, and get, you know, the most for, sure. for those that we could. Um, and then once the building is demolished again, you know, any, any of the debris, you know, whether it's brick or anything of that nature, um, they'll look to repurpose and that's, you know, that's part of the construction. And you were talking about grass fields at, at that current site, is that? Correct, okay. correct. So there'll be, there'll be a total of four fields on the site. Are we um, talking like football fields, 120 yard type of? Uh, so full, full size soccer full, okay. uh, fields. So there'll be two turf fields. Uh, one will be large enough to play um, a football game on. It'll be a, a full um, 100 yards with runoff. Right. Um, and then adjacent to that will be a little bit smaller multi-purpose playing field, but again, large enough for a, a regulation okay. um, soccer game. Those will be uh, constructed early on in the project because we recognize the impact of that it has to the sports teams by taking the field space sure. away. So by being able to you know, construct those early on in the project, we certainly won't mitigate all of the field use, um, but you know, it will give them an opportunity to, to get some teams back out there. Um, once the, again, the school is raised, then there'll be an, two additional grass fields um, that'll be placed. One will be up in front of the two artificial turf fields, and then another will run parallel to Glenowitz Way um, on the site of the existing high school. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to think, because most people were just excited just to know what's being done. Now they can see it visually, and as you said with the camera, they can see it 24-7. Sure. So that's the main reason I wanted you guys to come on, because now that the ground has broken, what are going to be the next steps? What are the what are the taxpayers going to have to be aware of? Uh, any changes that we're going to have to make? Like you said, the youth sports will be hindered a bit while the, this, this is going on. But when the long run, if you look at the big picture, it's going to be tremendous because they'll have brand new facilities to, and the weather won't affect it because it's the artificial turf. What do you, Correct. Yeah, so I, I just want to try to bring out any questions or concerns you might have even for the public to be aware of so that way they can adjust to, to a scheduling because, uh, as you say, we all have to work in this together. And if we're, we're informed, people can understand why certain things are happening. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh. if, if there's anything that we didn't address, or uh, if there are questions out there in the community, I'd encourage everybody to visit the School Building Committee's website. It's asbc.us. 
um, and there's a contact us link on the website um, and we regularly receive questions uh, via mail and then uh, we'll reach back out to the sender either by email or by phone uh, you know based on the nature and the complexity of the question sure. obviously right. uh, but we encourage people if, if there are questions to you know to reach out to us and you know we'll be more than happy to to answer any questions that there may be. Well, it's, important. You've all, it's obviously the case because you guys want to have the information out there and you have, every time I've asked you to come on you've been the first ones to respond so it's important because you know this is our town it's our tax tax dollars and it, it affects our whole community so the fact you're willing to come out here and get the right information out is very important and if you have any questions as Mr. Tester said you can address them to, to that website and of course you can always call Mr. Schaefer's office. <laughs> I'll Absolutely. give you his personal call. line now. Absolutely. No, please call. We, I want, <laughs> but he does. We he, want people to call. I right. appreciate that you took the time to, to reach out to, to do this with us so that we can at least again reach out to the community. You know Rich said, um, Rich was talking about that website. Um, I, most of the questions on that website are answered within 20, 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know if you send it at uh, 12 o'clock on a Sunday night. It may not get answered till Monday the next day. <laughs> right. um, if they're of a more complex nature and we have to send them to an engineer to answer the question, the only delay is that we want to give people an engineer's answer to their question. That's right. It's um, perfect. So uh, please, the, um, you know, the, there's no question that uh, we don't want to hear, that we don't want to have the opportunity to answer. Well, the, you're going to be at the groundbreaking ceremony at 1230, November 23rd. It's a Monday. So, and these gentlemen will be there personally, and I'm sure engineers will be there. And so if you have questions and you don't get the chance to do it via email first, please bring it to their attention. And again, I can't thank you enough for being so yeah. open with this because uh, people will have questions, especially as they see different things developing. Absolutely. You know, right now it's still kind of in the uh, picture in their head. It's not visible mm -hmm. to them yet, so it's virtual. But uh, please do, don't hesitate to ask these gentlemen and they'll get the proper answer for you. Anything you'd like to add? Save the website again. Uh, can I have the website, please, Mr. The Tester? website is www.asbc.us. Okay. And Mr. Schaefer, the Abington Public School website? The Abington the Public School website uh, is uh, Abington, P-S, as in public school, dot O-R-G. Okay. And what's the code between us? Yeah, <laughs> as long as you don't tell anybody, the code, the username, and then the password for the webcam are both Abington. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time to come out. I know you're busy schedule, so I appreciate it. Well, and again, feel free to us. ask these gentlemen any questions you have relevant to the schools, and, and uh, they'll be glad to get you the proper answer. Uh, I want to thank Bill Davis again, volunteering his time to help us out, and Justin Shannon, of course. And if you want to uh, tell people to watch this, you can go to Abington. Cam, C -A -M, dot org, o -R -G, and you can pick this up, and they can watch it for themselves so uh, they can get proper information firsthand. I want to thank you, Abington people. You're doing a great job. Let's work together on this, and uh, we'll have a tremendous school. We already have a good system. We'll have a tremendous school after this. Thank you very much. Have a great day.